Welcome back to Picture Healer channel for Feng Shui and Chinese Metaphysics. Today we want to learn 8 basic house charts based on the purple white flying star Feng Shui. You probably know we use annual flying star Feng Shui chart every year for setting up our Feng Shui. That's the chart changes every year and we also have monthly flying star chart if you need to know more detailed information every month. Another part of this system is the house charts. There are many, many different charts in the traditional feng shui system. The popular one includes the ba zai, the eight mansion style feng shui. The flying star feng shui is also based on the house direction. And it can be very complicated because there are 24 mountains, 24 directions, and there's also variation of the 24 directions. Another factor is the construction day of the house. Depending on if it's built in period 6, period 7, period 8, they have different charts. So that can get very complicated and confusing sometimes. Sometimes we just don't have the information of the history of the building. So today I'm going to show you a very simple system. It's also called the Flying Star House Chart, but it's only based on the direction of the house, regardless of the construction date or any major renovations. There are only eight charts, so it's easier and more practical to use. So first we can look at the nine flying star and the corresponding bagua and direction and the five elements. We can see the number one white star that's related to Kan in bagua and it's a water element and related to north direction. And the number two black star is related to Kun in Bagua. And it's the earth element and related to southwest direction. So for example, when we say Kan house, that means the number one white star goes to the center. And the Kan house means the house is sitting on the north side and facing south. And every flying star number has a corresponding bagua and a related number. So that number will go to the center and other numbers will follow certain directions. You can see it flies in a very specific path and there's a forward flying from center to northwest and then go to west and follow the directions, you can see how it flies. And the other one is a reverse flying. That's the opposite of the arrow directions. So those are two basic directions that flying star follows. Now we'll start with the Kan house. That's when the house is sitting on the north and facing south. And the number one is in the center and number one is a water element and depending on the five element relationship it creates different type of energy in different corner. For the auspicious five element relationship it creates generating or abundant qi. For the inauspicious relationship it can create depleting qi or stagnant qi and some five element relationship will create conflicting qi or the blocking qi. So this is like an energy map based on your house direction and you can set up your feng shui according to the chart. And for the generating and abundant qi direction, they are suitable for setting up bedroom or a religious altar or a door or entrance. And for the depleting and stagnant qi area, you can set up a bathroom or storage room or guest room or a room to store electronics or mechanical equipment. For conflicting qi area, it's okay to set up a bedroom too. Sometimes conflicting qi area can be used as money corner or money location too. 
and that's the area you can enhance your money luck. So even though it looks negative, it's not completely bad. And another money location is where the number eight star is located in every chart. That's another money location you can enhance to improve your money luck. And the last one is a blocking T, and it's the number five star, the Wu Huang, the five yellow stars location. So the energy of the five yellow is more like a blockage or obstacle. Even though the five yellow is one of the worst star in the nine flying stars, it's not always so negative. Unless there's certain year or months that's really conflicting with your energy. Here is the second chart that's for the Quen house. That means the house is sitting on the southwest and facing northeast. And the center is number two, the earth element. And you can see the abundant area, also the number eight, the money area, is in the southwest. And another lucky area is number nine for generating energy. And the meaning of every star is the same as the general annual flying star chart. The number one, six, eight, and nine are the most auspicious stars. The third chart is for the Zheng house. That's for house sitting on the east side and uh, facing west. And the number three flying star goes to the center for the Zheng house. And it belongs to the wood element. You can see the generating qi is in the east side and the abundant qi is in the northwest corner. So you can take advantage of this few good areas and set up your important space there, including bedroom, living room, or religious altar. And the number eight, your money star, is in the north side for this chart. The next chart is the Shun house. That's for house sitting on the southeast side and facing northwest. And the number four star flies to the center with the wood element. And you can see the auspicious area include the southwest for generating qi and the southeast abundant qi. And the number A star for the money luck is in the south. The next chart is the Qian house. That's when the house is sitting on the northwest side and facing southeast. We skip the number five because number five is a center. It doesn't have a house chart. Even though we have nine stars, the center one doesn't have a seating and facing direction. So there's no specific chart for that one. So for the Qian house, the number six goes to the center. You can see the number seven abundant area in the northwest. And the generating qi is in the north and the west. So those few areas are auspicious for important spaces. The next chart is for the Dui house. It's for house sitting on the west side and facing the east. And in the center, it's the number seven flying star. It belongs to the metal element. And based on the five element relationship in every corner, you can see the generating qi includes the south area and the northwest. And the abundant qi is in the southeast. And the number eight star for money luck is in the northwest too. So you can set up your feng shui according to the chart. The next one is the Gen house. That's for house sitting on the northeast and facing southwest. And the number A goes to the center, the earth element. And you can see the generating qi is in the northwest. Abundant qi is in the northeast. And the number A money star is in the center. So those are areas you can focus 
when setting up your feng shui. And the last chart is the Li House. That's the number nine star in the center with the fire element. And the Li House is a house sitting on the south side and facing the north. And you can see the generating qi is in the northeast and the south. And the number eight money star is in the southeast. So that's very basic of the eight flying star house chart. And another way to analyze the feng shui is to look at the exteriors. For the generating and abundant qi directions, it's better to have higher structures or landscape or mountains outside of the building. And for the direction of stagnant, conflicting, and depleting qi, it's better to have lower structure or lower landscaping. So the auspicious energy can be activated and the inauspicious energy will not be triggered. So this chart looks pretty simple, but you can combine with yearly chart and monthly chart to see all the different combinations. So it's still a very useful tool. And another one you can combine to this chart is uh, Gua number. If you know about the A-mention style feng shui, you probably know your life Gua number based on your birthday. Once you have all the charts at hand, you can analyze it according to different star combinations. And we will talk more about different combinations in the future. Thank you for watching today and see you next week.